Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Two Days Before Halloween, and I am in the spirit. You will never see this fucking outfit again, I promise. Like, this wig is terrible. It's actually... Okay, okay, check this out, check this out, check this out. It actually has freaking pigtails. I don't do pigtails. But you know what? You have seen it. It has been seen, and that will be it. That will be the last that you see of this damn thing. Okay, I'll probably keep it for the rest of the uh, series, but you know what? Like, as soon as I take it off, I'm throwing it in the garbage. Okay, that might be a bit of an over-exaggeration, but you, 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 you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm putting down. Let's turn this down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Bum, bum, bum. Screenshots. There. All the screenshots you could want. So we do go and have in terms of the bands. A hogger being banned out. Junk rat. The rubbish rodent is not going to be here anymore. Dragonshire is the map. We do have Stukov and Malfurion. A little bit of a healer choke coming out of the side of newly animated Nazgul's. I'm a bit surprised that the zombie team does not want Stukov because he's basically a zombie. We have a new Barak being picked up by Zeno, first and foremost. Gotta say, someone named Zeno, very appropriate that they're taking the alien. God, oh, there's some hair in my mouth. It's gross. Okay, we do have this. Uh, at, at least, at least, at least, the newly animated Mad Schools are taking a zombie. And Sylvanas going to go in and get that taken care of. Going to be shutting down buildings left, right, front, center, foremost, backmost, everywhere. We also have Johanna, very, very engaged heavy tank versus super defensive. I'm going to make... <laughs> COVID denier, Johanna, just everyone get together and like, Joe, six foot distances, no hugs. Uh, I am in a mood tonight. I will tell you that right now. We have a real big deal coming out on the Valala. I am back home. I am at my home base, my home locale. We also have the Orfea. We had a Fenrir. So, I've seen a lot of uh, Orphea bands lately, so I'm glad to see her get through. But, 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 this does mean that the blue team has taken both of their DPS before the ban phase. That means that their opponents can take a healer, knowing specifically their damage potential. And do notice they continue to ban out healers. Stukov, not going to be played. Um, Malfurion, nope. Brightwing, not a thing. Brightwing, not a thing. So, with that being taken care of, we do go ahead and have um, the third band coming out of the side of Start Slow and then Taper Off. And they go ahead and continue to focus the offlane. Neither side have picked up a healer or an offlane, but both of them are banning the ever-loving heck out of it. So, we're going to get a healer or an offlaner from newly animated Ignaz Golds right now. It has to be one or the other. They cannot um, continue to put it off. Put it off, put it off, like you know you do. Cause even when your hope is gone. So they do go ahead and take the healer, first of all. The Anduin locked in, not really surprising. They are giving their offlander the last pick, the ability to respond to what their opponents do. So we should have the healer and the offlander picked right about now. Hello, Erban. Nice to see you. So nice to see you. We're going to have the Yorel coming out. And then, um, Lieutenant Morat. Really? 
Morales? They they can't be going for a juice parts, can they? They don't really have like they've got decent damage, but not great. But the Anubra can spawn a lot of beetles in order to distract shots. The Urel could put down the armor thing, and it just makes her very very hard to move and get that underneath everyone. Although isn't that the twenty upgrade that gives it to everyone? So we will have Gaslow going into Urel, going to go ahead and like disable a lot of her ability to self sustain by stunning her in place. Brockus, you keep saying that, and you never do. I feel like the girl from Silent Hill, too. You keep saying that you're right, but you never do. Regardless, we're going into the game right now. I will get predictions up. Put your money where your mouth is, and I will see you on the other side. Well, darn it. We'll be back when the game actually starts. Hi, Crizo. All right, coming into game number one, we do go ahead and have start slow and taper off. Uh, coming out of the blue side, the blue gate, moving in here. We do have Urel jumping over it uh, with zero-day attack. Fenrir is going to be playing the Orfea. We have Xenochrist coming in with a new Barak. Rit Lu is going to be on the Illusionate Morales. And real big deal, going to go ahead and be on the Vala, the Angelic Vala. On the other side of the battlefield, representing newly animated Nazgul's. We're going to go ahead and have XX Lone Wolf, double X, coming on the Gazlo in the top lane. In the middle, we do have a Nemesis. Um, moving. Oh, interesting rotation. Um, they are going to go ahead and move up, 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 up with the Sylvanias. We do go and have a uh, playing the Anduin. Velocity is going to be on the Cassia and Toxic Core. Going to be sitting here on the Jojo Hana. Going to go and stop this as they come in. Zero day Texas. No, you're not going anywhere. Get the gas though. Get the gas though. Ra ra ra. But no, the rest of the team says no, we're getting the Andor, we're getting Blondie. Blondie is going to die.
So in, in summation, what did we actually get? We did get one of the towers down, so that was a successful uh, invade. I do think the kill is actually worth less than the tower, so yay. For a split second, I thought Gaslow was going to, like, smack uh, the Yellow back into his bomb, and then I'm like, Gaslow is not Hogger. That's not what that actually works. Yeah, I'm getting the Halloween spirit. Tonight is goth cheerleader night. Um, don't get used to it. I don't actually like it as an outfit, but it's what I've got. So we do go ahead and have uh, Zigzidi moving in. Big fight, four versus four. It does look like we got to uh, start soon taper off. He's abandoning this fight. They are going, giving this over. Again, the uh, Johanna steps back. There is an attempt to censure the Johanna, but it's not going to work. Cat, move. You're not allowed here, cat. Cat! You're definitely not allowed to hit the keyboard and move my like, screen around. That's all kinds of illegal beagles. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick gander at talent so far. The Gaslo did go for rocket boots, so able to move around a little bit fast. But I think the Gaslo cannot fight in close quarters with this. Is able to heal with his laser, blazer, blazer beam, but doesn't really have the ability to move through here. We also do have the Sylvanas getting knocked out uh, down below. We'll get out of there, but we'll have to fall back. And this does mean that both top and bottom shrines are currently controlled by Start Slow Then Taper Out. I don't know how to pronounce it either. That's why I say... Cassie, I'm going to go ahead and sit here. Play the vacuity. I think I said Velocity at first because they were moving around very fast, and I can't read. Although I will tell you, Chris, Chriso, it's Nana, not Nan. It's all of the, like, um... Sibling teams. Souls and Slow-Mo, Sis, Nana, the anime of Nana's Ghouls, um, Martyrs and Moratorium, which is Mom, and then Death and Delay, which is Dad. Very important. Man, freaking Zero Day Attacks, like, I will kill you all? Rah! I've asked them before, and they will not tell me. They just whatever you want to say, and I'm like, no, I really want to know, and they just they just won't answer. It's annoying as hell. But regardless, here we go. We do have the gas though double soaking for the time being, trying to go in and get a lead. Right now, we do have a bit of experience advantage for start slow, then taper off. Big, big, big move by Zero Cross. Oh, nice, nice hit by the Orphea. Very, very low health bars on the side of the animated Naz Ghouls. They're trying to push in here. They do have two Siege Giants going in, but the Siege Giants are getting blinded by that Cassia. The Wolf is moving away. But does leave uh, this in the way? I was going to say, so they can't really get that. Nope, Nimbus is not going to let you have that. Never going to get you up. Never going to give you away. Guess who's going to sit and take the shrine? That was a heavy commitment. I think this might be bad, but Orphe is super, super, super low, and Cat but Cassia is the one that goes down. Uh, going to be followed up by Johanna. That is a nice two double pickup for the uh, Valala. Vala does take the uh, Gambit quest up to 81 stacks already. Man, I've got to, like, we talk about this being the stun bug for a reason. Just goes in and clashes. It's just like you don't get to play the game for about five seconds. Oh, 
All right, we do go ahead and have um, start slowing the off, getting level 10 as they get the first dra Dragonite. And there's a kill into Gaslo up at the top, top, tippy, tippy, top, top, top. Nice piece of that Dragonite, not taking damage from both of the towers. Goes all the way up before they rotate down. They are just pushing into this mid. Surprising. Oftentimes we see them rotate bottom, but I think they're just like, this is a weak Dragonite. It's very, very early, so it's not going to get a whole lot done. So just use it for whatever you can get for it. I'm kind of amazed at how quickly this Vala is stack rooting just because, like, you know, you've got both uh, Cassia and Johanna on the other side. Johanna does take Zealous Glare, so there's a lot of blind to run in this. Yep, this is DE's playoff. I think everything's in playoff right now, Crizo. Shouldn't you know that? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're going to run in right now, but it looks like Urel may be in a spot of trouble. Oh my goodness! No, this Urel cannot- No! That- There's got to be such a swagger going on right now. Oh, don't- Urel, 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 you were doing so well! <laughs> So Swagger uh, nullified. We do go ahead and have, speaking of uh, ults, Art and Defender coming out, as well as Cocoon, Stim Drone, Crushing Jaws, and Reign of Vengeance. There is Vala with the Stim Drone. Nemesis, you cannot fight that right now. All right, there is one of the Gamma Stacks down. A super, super low. Nemesis not having much. Xenocrush trying to get that. And yes, the, for the Forsaken will get taken down by the Scourge Beetle. Nice zero attack moving in there. Try to go ahead and be uh, not like evacuity. Get out of there. But there's a pull out. Anduin's pull out game is strong. Toxic core going in. Goes ahead and pulls the beetle back into danger. It is four versus four. There is the Valkyrie. Valkyrie does miss as everything is moving in very, very quickly. Bottom fort is down on the side of newly animated now schools. Does look like bottom uh, camp will be picked up and secured. Meanwhile, Gaslow is moving up top, but already we've got zero day attack leading in the charge. I like that call from Gaslow. Gaslow does not go for the URL, goes for all of the minions because they, they know once the minions are dead, URL will fall back. Do not offer him that urban. He's taken over the stream like four times already. You do go and have this moving through. And real big deal, interesting, they put Volatile on the Dragonite. The Dragonite does not benefit from the extra attack speed from Volatile's Gambit, I don't believe. What if I can find that out? No, it doesn't give me the, like, hard stats, like how fast they attack. That'd be interesting to know. No, it was weird. The cannon tower actually stuck around for a second longer than it should have. We do have the Dragonite moving forward. Nemesis goes in and gets booted back. Um... Uh, Lone Wolf, very, very low, but not able to do a whole lot. We do have a bomb come out.
I I have a big problem with that. Like sometimes I'll be casting a really good game, I'll forget I'm supposed to be talking, and then we're just looking, and we've got uh the Vala does go down. Vala is now at I believe two deaths. Let's find out. Yep, two deaths has gone down to fifteen percent bonus attack speed. Man, I've got to say, this this Valkyrie, I've not seen get the results that it may need to get. Oh, nice move by the Orfea. Orfea went through and just went ahead and put that right where Sylvanas was going to be coming out. For sure, that was a B step, but I think that was just Toxic being like, wait, I can't hearth from here. Um, speaking of not being able to hearth, bye bye. Did, 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 did. Oh, no, 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 really, deal. I thought the Morales was on the red team for a second and, like, stemmed themselves right before they died. I'm like, why would you, what? So we do go and have the uh, area is held right now by the side of newly animated Nez Ghouls. They are driving their opponents back, but it's a very the only thing they've taken this entire game is they did get a hold of top fort. That is like the worst uh, lane because it's very hard to push across this, often called the bridge of death, because it just naturally clumps you up. A lot of things moving in here. Xenocry in a lot of danger. There's another Valkyrie. Um, we do go and have the Light Bomb. But unfortunately, Light Bomb timed right as um, the Sylvanas ran out. Once again, we have the Stim Drone on the Vala. Vala going to town. There is the... Um, man, if, if you have Light Bomb and you have Johanna, I, I have questions. Like, why are you not... That may be the end of the game. I do not think the Toxic Orc can hold this back, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Definitely not now. GG is called by Zilinx. Or Zilev. I'm going to say Zilev. And with that... Oh my goodness, I just looked at that. With with level 20 versus level 16, man, macro run coming out of start slow then taper off. They did not stop start slow, and I'm not sure they tapered off. I'm going to like sue them for false advertising at this point. That is not okay. That is not allowed. How dare they? But I'm looking at the stats. I feel like Vanna White, it's, it's amazing. Um, look at the stats we do have in terms of damage. Orphea coming in with 50,000. Orphea coming in with 47. And then Yorel actually comes in third place. Boom, bada, boom, bada, boom, boom, boom. See what Morales does? I gotta say, like, uh, this should have been a much higher number than three, but that Morales was doing work. A lot of people not dying when they should have, for sure. And uh, looking in terms of the uh, soak, we do go and have Yorel coming out with 14,000. Gaslow gets 11,000. So I've actually thought these numbers would be further apart with how different the, like, level in worth, the levels were at the end. Talents, we got those. Go ahead and copy them down, put them on your notepad, carry them into Storm League on your shoulders, and win with epic victory. I will see you guys for game number two in just a second. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to game number two. We are currently 1-0 in favor of Start Slow Then Taper Off. We had a very dominant game on Dragonshire. Let's find out what Garden of Terror, what terror Garden of Terror holds for us. I gotta tell you, if someone told me to go outside and actually like be in the sun and grow plants, that's pretty terrifying for me. So I definitely understand why this is a terrific garden. I should not laugh this much, but I totally am. Because I'm mature. So far, the same bands, Rubbish Roden and Stukov, being removed. And the Hogger again. So it does seem like Start Slow at least have, are just afraid of these heroes. Although, granted, would you win? Um, I don't know that you need to change your bands. That does not make a lot of sense. There is a change here. Last time I want to say they banned Brightwing. But this time we are going to go in and get rid of the Anubarak. So that is um, a change. Johanna is taken because Anubarak is not allowed. Hello, Lone Wolf. Thanks for delaying the game with your greed. <laughs> I am such a brat. With Anna, redemption. I'm going to say it because it's a cool line. We have the Hanzo and it's going to be Murden. Murden against Johanna. Not quite the stun menace that a new brat can be. But still, definitely does make it a little bit hard to move around. And there is the Brightwing, was not banned, so it's going to be taken by Fenrir. Oh, well, yeah, okay, you did ban Mouth. Brightwing was the third ban. You banned three healers. So we do go out of Blaze in the offlane. Um, I do not blame the Vala for being banned out. That Vala was awful. Okay, my, my arms are hot. Oh my gosh, my hair? I mean, it's not even my hair. This is, this wig is not sticking around. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. 
I would to go and have the Rhaegar being picked up, as well as the Deathwing. Deathwing, a pseudo-global, not quite a real global, not a global like Brightwing, but still can end up moving between the lanes um, a little faster than you sometimes expect. I gotta tell you, this thing is making me want to, like, reinvent a scene from Final Fantasy IX. Just pull my hair back and... I mean, my actual hair is reasonably long, but it's 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 not this. What? Mama, 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 murky. I mean, granted, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of mer mercenary camps. Um, but that does kind of depend on Bribe actually being able to be stacked, and that's by no means a guarantee. And thank you, Brockus. Flattery will get you everywhere. I'll get into the game. I'll get predictions back up. And I will see you guys in just a second. Coming into game number two, representing our winners of game number one, we do going to have start slow, then taper off. They are the Tacticians of Tyranny. They are re real big deal playing the Tassaface. We do have Ritlu on the Tychus. Fenrir playing the Brightwing. We do have Zero Day Attack on the Blaze and Xenochrist playing the Jojo Johanna. Meanwhile, opposing them in the Orange team, we do have uh, Vacuity playing the Deathwing. Toxic Gore on the Candy Cane Murden. Nemesis is going to be on the Hanzo. Jep! It's going to be playing the um, Rhaegar. And then down in the bottom lane, we do go and have Zalive. It's going to be playing the Murky. They are your orange team. They are the narcissist of the um, nihil nihilism. That doesn't really work. They are newly animated Nazgul's. schools. I had to go look. I forgot what their actual name was. I almost said they are Nana. But Nana isn't what I should actually be saying. So, looking at this, we do have Murky going uh, a fishy deal at level 1. Does get um, a stack. 8 stacks can bribe a mercenary. Can, that caps out at 32 stacks, which means Murky can instantly cap the like, 4 person camp. It shows up like right here. At 16 stamps, can instantly cap these two. Look at the fishy, because it's so delicious. Gotta have fishes. I'm a Berkey Mer. I'm a Berkey Me. I'm a Berkey Stunned and now the family. Unfortunately, Berkey never moved their egg, so we'll come back very, very quickly, but we'll be coming back down here again. That is the problem. Murlocs are terrifying. They're not strong, they go down very, very quickly, but every death only counts as one fourth of a death. And when you kill them, they come back in like four, five seconds. So we do go and have the camps being taken. Right now, the three of them are going to go in and pick up these. Then move immediately down and take this one up. Just gonna keep an eye on the fishy deal stacks. Oh, darn it. So, once again, we have to come here. That way, you cheaters can't see the minimap. Yeah, this is subtle. Just wanna sit here, very natural. I forget how big the minimap on Garden of Terror is. Can I bring that down? You can start to see it, but nope. Wife, it's. 
the wife said there's a children in the house or the wife is in the house, but they like split up so that she's not supposed to be there? She showed up with her new boyfriend, the cop? There we go. This is a bit more natural than being like, <laughs> How are you all? What has been the high and low point of your last, uh, the week? Prakas, I hope you're doing better. Message you a little bit last night over the issues that you are having. All right, so we are ready to go back into the game. So we're at level four right now. The QED up here. Da, 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 da. Boom, a lot of stacks for the Murky Moo. Up to 14 stacks. And there is a quick, quick, quick steal. They didn't see it coming. So right now we are almost uh, we're almost through level five. A little bit of an advantage right now for start slow then taper off. I feel like the game got louder. Did the game got louder for you guys. But you're really trying to go ahead and move all of this out. Should be decent at it. Does have a fire breath. It does quite a bit of damage. But of course, that the spell damage is being reduced by this uh, spell camp right here. And here come their friends. They're going ahead and pushing in. They're not really keeping... You should stay in all of the lanes, unfortunately. Murky goes down one more time. But that's the thing. If you look at the top under the little swords, it's zero to zero because Murky's only died two times. So that's basically half a death. So it's it's basically like it never even happened. Master Assassin and Subdue taken by Start Slow at level four. Neither of them having any stacks so far. Though admittedly, Subdue is an all or nothing quest. Once you get it one time, you got it. All right. It does look like they're really trying to let get, let Murky get stacks right now. Murky's not running in there. They they have a, a bit of a hard time actually taking care of this. So they've got the death wing for delay, a delay wing, and that's a real death as the Murden goes down, down, down. However, they do go ahead and trade that out. Oh, the Murky actually came up. Sometimes you feel like a Merc. Sometimes you don't. I'm a bit surprised they're fighting this, to be honest, with a murky. Not what I would have expected. Wait, what? Oh my goodness, why did no one tell me this this entire time? Viewers that aren't brackish, you are all fired. <laughs> Will we go ahead and have that taken care of? Um, we do go ahead and have the game sounds back on. I am so sorry about that. I don't know why, like, every single OBS scene seems to forget what my sound options are. I caught it last night, but I was in a different scene, one with no delay, and I forgot to check it on this scene. Every time I look at you, it makes me wanna go. I don't know why that song is stuck in my uh stuck in my head, but it definitely is. We'll be dealing with clearing this out. We do go and have mercenary camps a push push pushing. 
Marky up to 29 stacks, almost able to instantly take a camp. Does not want to waste it on this camp, though, because this camp is really easy. Plus, Marky's not actually there. Gather the seeds before your enemy does. I'm sorry that we had no game sounds. Game sounds make the, are, are like worth hearing. A thousand, a billion, a trillion percent. A thousand, a billion, a trillion percent. We are up to uh, level 10. Toxic Core taking a bunch of damage. Looks like that dwarf is not going to survive this. Brit Liu is up um, in the Odin. Going to go ahead and channel this in. But he really tried to go ahead and delay this and will indeed do so. Fish goes down. They do go ahead and get a kill onto Tassiface. This is the third seed, so start slow and, and taper off. Are now having to defend or are, are having to advance with the garden terrors um, into their opponent's forts. The bottom terror being taken out very, very quickly. This fort not taking much damage, but it is the one that is actually being defended. No one up here. Rit Liu is moving in with the terror, try and knock this down. The terror does lose a little bit of health every time it auto attacks. Two forts go down, and Toxicore as well. But this poor Tyke... Okay, Tyke is actually up to seven stacks of Master Assassin. Unless I lose with zero, and I was like, what is going on? Murky. Murky still at 29 stacks. I don't think this Murky pick is doing quite the work that they were hoping it would. Blue team has destroyed a fort. So here's our moving out. Will we have a domination? Um, it's, it's very, very clearly in favor of start slow at the time being. Here's real big deal. Not gonna let Murky come in, so get away from our camp. They're doing a really good job of taking these as they come up. Not letting that murky get anything done, but Tychus might be in a spot of trouble. Oh no, Fenrir is like booped out of there, um, but it's Toxic Core. There is the Ancestral Healing, goes ahead and heals that up right quick. Murky coming in. We do go ahead and have um, the Hanzo chased down by uh, Zero Day Attack. Eight kills to two right now in favor of start slow and then taper off. Nice pickup in the middle right now. Both teams are murky their hearts out. They know they can't leave Murky um un like looked at. It is like Murky stole something, went down to 13 stacks. Oh, nice double stun. Uh, Fenrir very, very low. Tychus goes down. The Murky is hunting down the dragon. The dwagon. Uh, oh, big dragon chasing little dragon. It's a dragon. It's a dragon. It's a dragon Clementine. All right, Zero Day Attack gets a nice stun onto Nemesis. Nemesis is going to leap out of danger. Jep is nearby. Here's a dragon. Dragons are hard to move. Here comes the Murky. Going to go ahead. A lot of fire breath coming out. This is picked up. No one actually gone. But there is a two-level lead and a talent tier advantage right now for start slow and taper off. We're going to have uh, Vacuity. Oh, big, big, big stun coming in. We do go ahead and have the... Um, Nice stun comes through, not quite getting anyone down though, and there are two down, but one of them is Murky, doesn't really count. But now there's four down, Vicuity the only one left. I don't think this dragon could clean up the entire enemies. Mm -hmm. 
So, one seed so far. Still needs two more if they want to move this. But they will go ahead and take their opponent's camp. Nice bit of pressure coming down the top lane. A new seed is set to sprout. Deathwing. All right, do you take the explosive one? Yes, okay, that's gonna be very, very, very helpful, especially if Murky is actually holding them in place. Because you can just like pop everyone in that area. Deathwing goes airborne. Only way Deathwing can actually heal. All right, really goes and pick this up. Both teams are level 16 at this point. So we do go ahead and have even talent tiers, although there is an 8% health and an 8% um, damage bonus on the side of start slow because they are two levels ahead. And 4% times 2 is 8%. I can do math. Aren't you proud? Oh, Finner takes so much damage. Somehow stays alive. Toxic core. Oh, that is tragic. That's almost illegal. They do go ahead and this is um, seed point for the side of start, slow, and taper off. If they can get this... Acuity is very, very, very separated. Trying to go ahead and stay up, down to 700 health and no ability to heal. This could be very, very, very bad for the Nazgulites. The opponents are knocking on 20. Another um, terror phase has hit them. All right, we do have both the top and the bottom keep are under siege. Level 20 is unlocked for the enemy of the Ghouls. The healer just went down. This is just like bad news on bad news on bad news. If you are a fan of the Naz Ghouls, I have some bad news for you because I do believe the game is most likely over. There's a nice arrow coming through. But with that, we are going to have the game ends. Domination 2-0 for start slow and then taper off. Crizo does not have to learn how to say that one name. Let me see if I can get an interview right quick. All right, while we wait to see if I am enjoying, um, let's go ahead and look at the stats right quick. So, looking at things, ah! There we go. My head was getting, or my ears were getting chopped off and that's not, that's not fun. No one likes that. So we do go ahead and have, looking at the stats, um, Number one in terms of hero damage is that Tychus. No surprise, it does have percentage damage and is running into a Deathwing. Very, very, very easy to stack out of your mind. 
in that situation. It does look like I am joined by Zero Day Attack, who is being very, very quiet and sneaky. Hello. <laughs> Didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> I will talk all day if you let me. By all means, interrupt me. <laughs> so first of all, kind of an easy question. Uh, how are you guys feeling right now? We felt really good. Uh, we were a little nervous because we have a tendency to choke in the playoffs. So we were glad that we came out strong today. That's an interesting statement. Because um, I don't remember seeing you in previous seasons. Who? What was your old team name? Or do I just, uh, we am used, I just oblivious? Um, this is our first season in NGS, but we were we were we were Nexomania and uh, the RCL, and oh, okay, then gotcha. we were that's but then we were the Emerald Dragons in those leagues. Uh huh. Okay, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm a um, former dragon myself. Yep, I remember seeing you in there a bunch. Then my, my team had a lot of problems. I'm like, I'm going to go find a team with less problems. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've seen you on a few different teams, but uh, I didn't know if you were just... I'm sure sometimes... Because aren't you a, a sub, too? Or for one of the leagues? I definitely can be. And I I mean, so. what can I say? I get around. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so going back to game number one. Game number one was the game on... Well, I can't believe I already blanked. Um... Dragonshire. Thank you. I was like, they banned both Diablo maps. They banned <laughs> out. <laughs> um, but Dragonshire, Dragonshire, very, very interesting game. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of all over the place, to be honest. What was your like overall strategy going into that? Um, well, in previous times, we've been trying to do strategy there. We try to go double bruiser. But um, last time we played these guys, it didn't work for us, and they beat us. So we kind of switched up our strategy this time and going for our more traditional comps that we used to, used to run. So we we're a lot more comfortable in that way. And uh, I feel like we banned out a couple of their comfort picks as well. And uh, it really w went a lot better for us. We got our combos down. Um, they tried to send two top and when they did, we took advantage of it. And we took control of the map mid and bottom. And I just feel like in the long game, that won us the game too. So I do have to ask, just because I never see it, Morales? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that wasn't the plan. That They just uh, banned out a lot of healers that game. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I do see Morales sometimes on Braxis because the distance between the like point and the wall is so small that Morales can actually be relatively safe and undiveable. But mm -hmm. on Dragonshire, I was like, b -b 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 what? That's like one of yeah. the most <laughs> rotation-tastic maps possible. And you picked the healer yep. with no escapes? <laughs> yep, we, we, we're trying to side between her and, and uh, Rhaegar there, but... They, uh, they didn't have too terribly much CC or dive, so we felt we were pretty comfortable playing it. Plus, uh, Stim Tavala is really nice, too. Yeah, that was definitely doing work, for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, though, Vala was the one that killed the most to enter the Gambit Talent, so... <laughs> too greedy on her part. <laughs> um, going into game number two, obviously, the very first question I have to ask is... Were you guys expecting the murky, and did you have to change your strategy to account for the fishy menace? No, we uh, we definitely weren't expecting that at all. Um, and all, I when just looking at, looking at their comp, it looked like they were trying to delay us on the seeds as much as possible, and then trying to get some macro advantages. Um, so we kind of prepared for that, and with murky having his bribe sex, we also tried to get our camps as much as possible whenever we could, because uh, to prevent him from stealing our camps. And I feel like overall we did a pretty good job doing that. Um, obviously we, I don't think we lost too much structural wise and we were able to just, uh, prevent that by, by seeing the, seeing what their plan was, I think, ahead of time. No, I definitely did notice that you were getting camps as soon as they came off cooldown. Sometimes you'd catch Murky <laughs> on the camp and Murky is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it definitely helps that we are, we, uh, we had, mo there was like three or four of us that were all calling out as soon as camps were off that we need to get our camp before Murky can get there. And somebody pointed it out right as the map started, so. Yeah, we are definitely watching for it the whole game. Um, the other question I have to ask, just overall, because it was it was kind of interesting that I noticed like the first terror phase, you pushed bottom really hard and just had Tychus of all people in the off lane pushing top. Was that just mm -hmm. a weirdly enough, this is where our people were, or is there some reason you want him in the off lane? Because I just felt so bad for him because it took him forever to get Master Assassin done, just because he always seemed to be wandering by himself. Yep. Um, no, there wasn't any uh, specific strategy for that. We just wanted somebody in each lane to get the most, uh, to spread them out as much as possible. And uh, it just so happened that he went top, so I went mid, and then three men stayed bottom. 
Oh, that makes no sense. real strategy there. <laughs> and the last question that I always ask whenever I have a team or a variant <laughs> of this anyway, uh, where does the name start slow then taper off come from? Uh, well, we wanted a new team, a new team name from the Emerald Dragons. So uh, we kind of, for the longest time, we were trying to think of new team names. But we could never set, settle on one. And then uh, one of our subs was playing with us one day, and he just uh, he made a comment like, you know, sometimes we just start slow and we taper off after that, you know, and we just uh, use that as a team name. Then it's like, you know, we'll use that. Fantastic. So those are all the questions I had. Let me go ahead and turn it over to you for any shout outs you might want to give. Yeah, shout out to the team. They played uh, really well tonight. Um, no real complaints. I felt like overall we just played a really solid game, both games. All right. Well, fantastic. Anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for casting us. I'll oh, shout out to you as well for casting us. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. That was my hint. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> I um... took it. I took the hint. <laughs> So with that, I will go ahead and say um, very much congratulations. Actually, 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 let me mm -hmm. look real quick. Because having beaten this, where are you going? Um, we play the winner of the fourth and uh, fifth seed game, which I think I heard they played tomorrow. I don't think they played quite yet. I believe. Okay, so yeah, it'll be uh, the winner between if we've taken you and Infernal Affairs. Is there one of those that you're hoping to face or one of them you'd rather not face? Um, I'm trying to remember our regular season. I know we, I think we lost the map to Infernal Affairs. I don't remember if we lost one till we've taken to, we've taken you. Um, obviously we, uh, we played Infernal Affairs like really early on in the season. And at that time we were kind of, I know we were kind of struggling a little bit and we just, uh, we we're out of our funk having a month, month to, um, break between our last, uh, between Nexomania and NGS. And, uh, I don't know. We just struggled a little bit in the early game, early, early part of the season. So it'd be good to, play them again to see how they are now. So I guess I'd like to play them again, maybe. <laughs> All right. Look forward to it. And yeah, that'll be next week at some time. I will try and pick it up, but no promises. <laughs> Hopefully again. <laughs> but uh, congratulations. I will let you enjoy the after party. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. And for everyone else, um, I, I do cast a lot of Heroes of the Storm here. Follow the channel if you haven't already. Um, I do play another of other number of other games. Sunday nights is usually some sort of viewer request game. Friday nights is uh, my personal stream where I play whatever the hell I want. I'm about to be playing Vampire the Masquerade, which is, which is a very rocka game. But right now we're going to go over and raid into Rockwell. So let's get there. Let's do it. And let's have fun. Um, thing? I, I'd have to be able to do the raid? Get out of the way? Oh my god, it won't let me raid because the stupid prediction thing is in the way? Stupid thing? Okay, okay, okay. I should be able to read from here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> 